Alrighty, we're going to do a hands-on example of uh, Dijkstra's single source shortest path algorithm. To its friends, it's generally just known as Dijkstra's algorithm. Um, so we've got a graph over here. Um, it's a weighted graph. Uh, it's undirected. Um, in the single source shortest path algorithm from Dijkstra, we need to have a single source. And that means you pick one of the nodes to start with, and then the algorithm finds the shortest path to every other node in the graph. Um, so, let's start the algorithm. To start the algorithm, we need this little table over here. It has the vertex or the node listed here. Um, in this particular graph, there's six nodes. So. A, B, C, D, E, F, and then whether we have marked it as known or not, meaning have we marked it as visited. If you looked at the uh, tree traversal algorithm example that I have posted, um, you can definitely pass through a node without it being marked as known yet. Uh, the idea is once you mark it known uh, or known as true, that means that you know the shortest path from the single source to that node. For example, if I ever mark E, uh, E's known to true, that means that it will not get updated again. It means that I know the shortest path to E from what the single source is. Um, this is the distance. At the very beginning, we initialize everything to infinity. Um, and then the P sub V is the previous node or previous vertex that we came from to get to this particular node given a particular distance. Now we have to be careful with this distance. This distance is not the distance from the previous node. It's the distance from the single source through the previous node. Okay, so at, uh, for this one, let's just say we're going to make A our single source. Okay, so the way we start is um, I'm going to do this with the mouse because I found that my drawing tablet is a little bit uh, a little bit finicky and I have not learned to properly wield it yet. Um, so we're going to have mark that as true uh, right there, and we are going to get rid of this infinity right there because we know the distance we could label it zero if we wanted to, but usually most of the times I just leave these. Uh, blank. Um, so that is our first node. Now we're going to mark it somehow as known. So we could maybe take a circle and just have it as like maybe an outline or something. So something like that. So we'll say that we already know A. All right. So we know A and then the algorithm works as follows. Um, we find the things that are directly adjacent to A, meaning they share an edge with A. We find those nodes and then we update their distances based on the uh, shorter of the two distances, the one that's already in the table or the one attached to the node that we're working with. So in this case, A is connected to B, A is connected to E, and A is connected to D. From A to B, to get to B, um, we're going to say that that distance is 10. So we're going to mark that as 10. Um, and then the that's going through vertex A, OK, node A. So to get to B from A, as far as we know now, the shortest distance we found so far is 10, and that's going directly from A, our single source. The next thing we do is we'll label E. From A to E, as far as we know, um, 5 is going to be the shortest to get there. So we're going to fix that. We've got a 5, and then we're going to say that's coming directly from A also. Okay, let's make that a little bit better. A little bit better. Okay. All right. And then we have also connected to A, D. So we're going to update its distance as well, and its previous. So uh, from A directly to D, we have 6. And the A there. There we go. Now, the algorithm pr uh, proceeds as follows. We, you'll notice that we have only marked A true. 
of the ones that are still labeled false, you pick the one with the minimum distance. So we can see that the one with the minimum distance is clearly E. Okay, so we go to E and then we mark that known. We're going to make that red. Okay, we mark E as known. So we're going to take that and we're going to type true. We're going to write true. A lot of color switching around here. I might mess this up before the day's over, but the algorithm will probably be okay. So I'm marking E as true. So we're, we're stating we know the shortest distance from um, the single source, which is A, to our E. Now, since we already know the ones that are attached to E, the nodes that are attached to, uh, or to A rather, we now are going to update the distances if they're shorter than what is already in the table if they're adjacent to E. And you don't count the nodes that are already marked as true, only ones that are marked as false. So for example, I'm not going to look at E and say, oh, look, A is attached to E, so update that to a 5 or something, which you wouldn't update anyway because A is, you know, not has no distance from itself. But you just never consider anything that's already true. So I'm going to go, I'm going to look at E to B, and when we find the distance, you have to add in your current distance from A. You don't consider just the 2 here. I add in whatever's already here, 5, plus my my own distance to the B, which is 2, and that's 7. So through E, to get from A to B, it's 7. And you look at what's currently there, and that's a 10. So that's more than what we currently have. And we want shortest path, so we definitely can replace this. We can say, well, 10 is not the shortest path. So we're going to say, and either an A is not going to be the previous vertex. We're going to update this so that the distance is 7. It's the 5. Um, from A to E, and then two more from E to B. Okay, but we have to update the previous vertex because we did not come through A, we came through uh, E. All right, so far so good. We can look at E to D. E's is five, and if we add the two more to get to D, um, that is seven. The distance on D is already 6, and 6 is already smaller than 7 if we just go directly from A, so we don't update that one. And then we look at the other thing. Um, so A we don't consider because it's already set. B we just considered. D we just considered. And now we have F. F is set to infinity, so we can't do much worse than that. So we're going to say through E, the distance to get to F, if we look at this, it's 5 to get to E, because I've got that listed here, and then another 7 to get to F. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? So that is 12 if we go through E. E. Okay. There we go. So far, so good. And there's no other additional nodes that we haven't considered that E is connected to, so we uh, make the algorithm go further. Of the ones that are labeled false, you pick the shortest distance. If there's ever a tie, we usually just go with the one that's alphabetically or listed first. Uh, but these we don't have to worry about. There's no tie. The next thing that's left, now careful, that's marked false, not true. Right? We could end up in an endless cycle if we keep going back to E. Oh, look, it's a 5. Well, it's set to true. Of the false ones, we have a 7, an infinity, a 6, and a 12. 7, infinity, 6, and 12. The minimum of those is clearly the 6. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark the uh, D as known. All right, mark the D as known. And then we say we know the 6 is accurate, and currently the A and the A is good. So we're going to take out that false label it true true if it'll let me there we go okay and then D is set to known now if we then consider D's adjacent nodes the only two things that it is adjacent to the only two vertices it's adjacent to are already set to true so we, we don't have anything we can update 
So now we look at the table again and we say, of the false values that are left, pick the minimum. We have 7, infinity, and 12. Clearly the 7 is smaller than infinity and it's smaller than 12. So we now update B as known. So now B is a known node. We set this known to true right here. All right. Oops, there we go again. Okay. And we also know that it's it comes from E. That's the shortest distance uh, is seven, and it and it comes through E. Um, and then we have the distance obviously seven. Now we consider the nodes that B is connected to. We've got A and E. Those two are both set to true. They're already known, so we don't consider those. But we do consider C and F. If we consider C, uh, C's distance is infinity, so we can't do much worse than that, so we probably are going to be doing better. So through B, what's the distance to C? B's distance is already 7, and if we add 4 more to account for the distance between B and C, that takes us to 11. So that's through B. Okay, there we go. And then we consider F. F already has a value that's less than infinity, but let's see if we can do better. So from the B to F, it's 3, and we add that to our current distance from the single source, A, is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10, and what do you know? That is less than the current value, 12. So we're going to update this. We're going to update this to 10, and then update the previous vertex to B. So this is 10, and then this is B. Okay, so far so good. Um, now we have no other nodes to update uh, that are attached to B directly. So again, we look at the two remaining false values and look for the minimum. The minimum is F now because we just updated it to 10. So we're going to um, make F a known node. I'm going to label it known. F will be set to true. And then, once we've done that, we have to consider if we need to update any of the values. So we look at the table, and the only thing, uh, the table in the graph, the only thing that is connected to F that isn't already known, set as known, is this node C right now. And if we add the F to C, which is 1, and F's total is 10, that's 11. C's already 11, so we're not benefiting anything from updating it. So if you don't benefit from the, an update, you just leave it alone. Um, now, because if you did, that would just be, it would be a waste of computing cycles, really. So what we're going to do with node C, since it's the only false value left, we just update it and we are claiming, hey, I guess we know the shortest path to uh, C from A also. So we're going to take that, mark that as true, oops, sorry, mark that as true, maybe in the right color, that would be nice, okay, and now we have all true, and now we know the algorithm's done. Some follow-up questions that you might be asked is, uh, okay, for example, if I say what, if I make this a little bit bigger, okay, so what, is the distance from A to F. That's very, very easy because we can just look at the table and we have been keeping an updated value. So if I want to know the distance from A to F, it's just 10. What about what is the distance from A to C? Again, same thing. You just look at the table. Anything under the distance, it'll give you the value of the distance. Now here it's a little bit harder. What is the shortest path from A to F. Now, this might seem a little bit tricky at first, but it's really quite simple. You basically start at F and you write it out, you follow the previous back until you get to A. So I mark F and then I say that that came from B, because that was my previous vertex, and that 
came from? Where did B come from? B came from E, was its previous vertex. And now if I look at E, E came from A. Now I just reverse it, A to E to B to F, and then there is the shortest path. So I, I make this the shortest path. This is obviously not. That was just our intermediate work, right? Very, very simple. Okay, you just follow it backwards. Let's do it one more time with a different one. What is the shortest path from A to uh, C? Since it's a little farther down also, you start with C and you work your way back. C came from B. B came from E. And then E came from A. Then you reverse it. Okay, we can delete that little helper right there, and then there is our path. And if you're asked, well, what's the distance between A to C? Well, we already answered that. You just look directly at C's. But it's that's one of the reasons we keep the previous vertex is so we can build actual paths and, fi and know what the path is. So I hope this was useful um, for anyone who was looking. I apologize for the poor graphics if you're watching this. Um, this is kind of a quick thing I'm throwing together for one of my classes, but I do hope that anyone watching is going to benefit from it. So thank you very much and have a great day.